All right, so we're going to look at two methods in which we can convert an alcohol to an alkyl halide. The first mechanism that we're going to examine, we simply will use a different form of the non-organic reagent. The mechanism is identical. The second type is one that is not formally presented in chapter 10, but it is the most common method of converting an alcohol to an alkyl chloride. So if we look at the PowerPoint slide in front of us, we see that it is possible, however not very useful in the laboratory, if we were to react an alcohol with HBr, increased heat. The idea behind this reaction is that we would protonate the alcohol, then we have backside attack from bromide, and water is a good leaving group. And we do get 76% conversion of reactant to product. This, however, is going to be very limiting for only methyl and primary substrates. So its synthetic utility is not very good. We can look at the mechanism of this reaction, uh, and as I just described, but now we can see it with some arrow pushing. We will protonate the alcohol, so there's a proton transfer step in which one of the lone pairs of the alcoholic oxygen will attack, make a bond with, the electron deficient hydrogen in HBr. Since hydrogen is a monovalent atom, it will yield its former bonding electrons to bromide, and so bromide is a leaving group. Then we'll have an SN2 step. Remember, this is a concerted nucleophilic attack, loss of a leaving group, or heterolysis, that occurs at nearly the same time. Concerted doesn't mean simultaneous, it means synchronous. Within a fraction of a billionth of a second of nucleophilic attack, this carbon-oxygen bond will break via heterolysis such that no intermediate is formed, a transition state only, yielding the major product. And as this slide discusses, there are some issues associated with this methodology for converting the alcohol to the alkyl bromide. These are highly acidic conditions, and if you have other functionalities on the molecule that are sensitive to acidic conditions, this certainly will not work. It's also possible to have a rearrangement, however unlikely. And so a better way of actually converting this to the alkyl bromide needs to be examined. <clears throat> And so we are going to use a reagent, phosphorus tribromide, and of course its chloride component, phosphorus trichloride. And we can use these on sterically hindered alcohols, so secondary alcohols, tertiary alcohols. Since SN2 is going to be a key component of this reaction, we are going to see an inversion of configuration at a potential chiral center. <clears throat> so I'd like to show you this mechanism in the context of this slide and then I'd like to go to the easel and do it in a more dynamic fashion. So you're going to have nucleophilic attack loss of a leaving group in a nearly simultaneous manner that is an SN2 reaction. Notice I have activated this OH, which is not a good leaving group, to a positively charged species, which is a good leaving group. We have a second SN2 reaction, which results in inversion of the center of chirality to yield the product. So let's take a look at this dynamically so that we can clearly see these patterns as these bonds are being made and as these bonds are being broken. 
So we'll just use a different substrate. And I'm going to be more complex on purpose. And of course, we're going to have phosphorus tribromide. Now, the mechanism is identical whether this is PBR3 or PCL3. Obviously, if this is PCL3, then we'll be adding a chlorine atom instead of a bromine atom. Now, phosphorus does have a lone pair of electrons but it is electrophilic and overwhelmingly electrophilic because it's making three bonds to bromine which is significantly more electronegative than phosphorus and so our first SN2 process the lone pair of oxygen will attack the phosphorus and then one of these phosphorus bromine bonds will break in a heterolytic manner so again you can describe this with vocabulary as an SN2 process or as a nucleophilic attack, loss of a leaving group. Remember, loss of a leaving group can also be termed heterolysis in a concerted fashion. My preference is the latter because it tells you exactly what the mechanistic arrows are doing. SN2 is really a type of mechanism, not a mechanistic pattern. And there is a subtle difference. Regardless of which of these two terms you choose to associate with this process, the arrow pushing is exactly the same and our intermediate will have the following structure. This first step is really to activate the leaving group. Remember, there's bromide ion in solution. Now, this bond is going into the plane of the screen. Bromide, therefore, will attack anti to this bond. So the carbon bromine bond will be coming out of the screen. And this is another SN2 process. Nucleophilic attack, loss of a leaving group in a concerted fashion. Leaving the following major organic product. Now we also have an inorganic product and we absolutely want to put zero emphasis on this. Instead of PBR3, it's PBR2OH. 
this is not nucleophilic enough to react with this molecule. So there's a second method to convert an alcohol to an alkyl chloride. So in the previous mechanism I used PBr3, I could just as easily use PCl3. That is not the major method for converting an alcohol to an alkyl chloride. The major method involves thionyl chloride, which is SOCl2, and typically this is in a solution of pyridine. So I'm going to provide the structure for pyridine. It is an aromatic compound that is also heterocyclic, which means not all of the atoms in the aromatic ring are a carbon. One is a nitrogen. And very importantly, the lone pair is not in the ring, but rather is localized in an orbital that's 90 degrees from where all this pi overlap is taking place. This is an example of a rare reaction in which the solvent participates in the mechanism. And as such, it's a very unique organic mechanism. So first step, very similar. We're going to have nucleophilic addition. This is different from SN1 and SN2 because I have an electrophile that has the ability to expand its octet and is engaged in a pi bond. So this first step would simply be nucleophilic attack. In the language of Cardi, he would call it nucleophilic addition followed by nucleophilic elimination. Again, those aren't technically mechanistic patterns. Those are types of mechanism. So I'm simply going to call this nucleophilic attack. Once this pi bond breaks, I have a negatively charged oxygen. I reform the sulfur oxygen double bond. Now, this is not without controversy because there's not a lot of double bond character between sulfur and oxygen because sulfur is a much larger atom. But for the purpose of this mechanism, it's generally accepted that the, for, the reformation of the sulfur-oxygen double bond helps to expel chloride. One of the chlorine atoms is now chloride in solution. And of course, I've got a really nice leaving group at this point. So I call this loss of a leaving group. Addition, elimination is substitution. I've substituted one of the chlorines for the oxygen and the rest of that molecule to which oxygen is bonded. And really more importantly, I have chloride ion in solution to act as a nucleophile in the next step. In this regard, <clears throat> it is very similar to the PBR3 mechanism we just examined.
So really, I've set this leaving group up for the next step in the reaction. And it's important to remember that sulfur does have a lone pair when it makes four bonds. So now the chloride in an SN2 process, again, we can envision that as either SN2 or a concerted, nearly simultaneous nucleophilic attack and loss of a leaving group or heterolysis process. So here's the nucleophilic attack portion. This bond is going to be coming out of the plane because I must have backside attack. And because I must have backside attack, it's going to have a different orientation. It's another way of saying that there is going to be net inversion in this SN2 process. And the heterolysis. At this point, I have justified the major organic product but we're not quite finished and the reason that we're not quite finished is that this leaving group is nucleophilic. So pyridine, the solvent, helps us to fix this problem. By degrading this leaving group. There are two processes in chemistry that are irreversible. One is when you form a gas because of systemic entropy, and one is when you form a solid. So we'll have a proton transfer. I'll make another sulfur oxygen double bond, and then chloride is my leaving group. SO2 is a gas. And pyridinium chloride is a solid. Problem solved. There is no competing reverse reaction because I have irreversibly degraded the nucleophile. One of only a few examples in introductory organic chemistry where the solvent participates in the mechanism.